Man, I just love the morning sun coming up over a bean field. It just looks beautiful. Well, it's uh, beginning of a new week here. Last week we barely got anything combined because we got like two inches of rain on Monday and Tuesday. And then here we are, it's the second week of October. So I thought we would take a quick break from all the combine footage and give you some educational information on soybeans. This is a soybean plant. They're only about three feet tall, most of our beans in New York. They are a legume and they make nice little beans for us. This is what a soybean looks like right here. Soybeans are one of my favorite crops. They have a ton of uses and purposes in our world and they are incredibly fun to grow. They're so unpredictable. They keep you on your toes. We are about halfway done combining beans. We've got, oh no, wrong. We're about a third of the way done cutting beans. We've only been really at it for like one week so far because last week the weather wasn't that great. We've done about 175 acres or so. So we have about 350 left to go which includes a little custom work. So a fun fact about soybeans, I bet you didn't know, the US produces 90 million acres of soybeans every year, which produces about 4 billion bushels for the worldwide population. <laughs> a bushel is about okay, 60 pounds of soybeans. It's actually a volumetric measurement because it's hard to measure volume, we measure by the weight. So when we take our beans to the market, the weight divided by 60 is the amount of bushels that we have. So I've showed you guys the combine before in the past videos, and I mentioned how the grain head cuts the soybeans, but I haven't really given you a close up and personal view of it. This one happens to be 30 feet wide. It's a flex a grain platform with the auger. The reel goes around like this, the beans, get pushed in by the reel. They get cut by these knives right here. Sometimes they flop down like this. Sometimes they get pushed up against it like this. But basically, the auger just brings them down to the center. These middle feeding forks push it into the feeder house drum. That's what brings it into the combine. It's actually really simple. What makes it a little more complex is this cutter bar literally rides right on the ground. There's actually hydraulic pressure pushing down on this and the combine sensing the ground as it goes over the ground, it can contour to it and flex around rocks, dirt mounds, or whatever. And then the feeder house right here, this plate that it's mounted to actually pivots. So the head's sensing where the ground is based on hydraulic pressure. If it senses it needs to go up or down, it'll tell the hydraulics in here to pivot based on where it needs to be. The biggest difficulty with this head is when the beans uh, go up and down. You have to move this reel up and down as you go across the fields. Otherwise, your beans can build up on the cutter bar. It'll push the incoming beans down so that the knives can't cut them. If your reel's too far down, you will push the beans over. Cutter bar comes to cut them. It'll snip them at a weird angle and leave four inches uncut. You can leave beans out in the field like that. And you have to watch out for rocks. Because it rides on the ground, sometimes it has this dam on it so that rocks aren't supposed to get in there, but sometimes they hop over the dam. Sometimes if they're small enough, they do go through the machine and it makes a big, loud clunk bang. Don't ask me how I know that. So that's it for the grain head. All right, this is the grain cart. This is our second most handy tool on the farm. It's big and it holds a lot of grain and it has an auger on it so it can unload itself. You could harvest without it, but it would just take a lot longer. You can zoom around the field with it and dump the combine into it so that the combine doesn't have to drive to the dumping spot. It keeps the combine moving. If we fill this and fill the combine with one bin full, it fills the truck up. It works out really well for logistics. While the truck's going to the bin to unload, we can load this thing, load the combine, and when the truck gets back, we have a full load ready to just dump right on it so it can just keep the truck moving. You keep the truck moving, you keep the combine moving. The grain just goes up that auger right there. Uh, that one, that auger right there, it swings out like that up in the air. The reason we bought this grain cart is because all the augers are hydraulic driven. You can see the hydraulic motors up there because this tractor has no PTO, which is the shaft that turns around. Everything's driven off hydraulics on this. It's a little slow, it, well, it's very slow. 
I will say that it's not near as fast as a PTO driven one. It works for us. We can empty it in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. This is the inside of the grain cart. It's large and in charge. So that's the grain cart. And let's see, what other tools do we have around here? Oh, the grain dryer. So this is the grain dryer. And you've probably seen this in some other videos because we had to dry every bushel of wheat this year, which we don't usually have to do. So this thing is what we use to dry our grain down with. When we harvest grain, it's oftentimes too high in moisture to store. To store grain, it has to be like below 15% moisture. What happens with soybeans is Overnight with the dew, they get up to like 16% moisture. In New York they do at least. I don't know about other parts of the country. If they're wet, we throw them in the dryer. What you do is you dump into that pit right there and it takes it in to this auger. And then this auger goes up vertically and then it spews out of those, those right there, those openings. Uh, so this thing gets filled up to the top and then it comes around, the grain goes down around this cone and down there, and then it goes back up. So it just keeps cycling around and around and around. There's a fan in here. Oh dear. Circulates air. And then inside the fan there, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a burner, a huge gas burner. The fan blows the hot air into that center cone that you can see in there. So the grain's coming down around the center cone down here. It's like that wide. And then that center cone is where the heat is and the air movement is. And it's like got a lot of surface area to hit a lot of grain all at once. So as it's circulating, it's also getting hot air blown on it. And then once it's dry, it, we cool it a little bit and then we dump it in this dry wagon and then run it up into the bin. I got nothing else to say about that, really. So that's our fancy grain handling system. Once we get them in the bin, we can take them out that auger into the truck. We take them over to where we market our beans. That place is like a farm. That's also a mill. So they make feed for dairy cows. That's what most of our beans go for. Our soybeans are what would be called non-GMO. They're conventional seed. They're not Roundup ready. Our soybeans go for dairy feed because these dairies have a contract to produce non-GMO milk, uh, which is kind of um, funny. We can get to that in a minute, but essentially they need the non-GMO beans to feed their cows so that they can qualify for this contract. That's one of the reasons why we grow non-GMO beans, but the real reason I grow non-GMO beans is because they cost less than half the money to produce because the seed is so much cheaper. A few years back, the prices of things were really bad and we had a few years where we got really bad yields and I was reading a book by Mike Michalowicz um, called Profit First. And in this book, he talks about like true entrepreneurs will take and try to get twice as much value out of half as much input. The only way I could get twice as much value is to like make a finished product, which we are working on. I was like, how do you do half as much input? We could grow conventional beans and that's where it all started. So our beans are non-GMO. Basically there's nothing different about not a non-GMO plant than a GMO plant. All that's different is that on a, with a GMO plant, it's bred to be resistant to certain chemicals that a non-GMO plant would not be resistant to. So for instance, Roundup. If I sprayed my beans with Roundup, they would die. If a person who had Roundup ready soybeans sprayed Roundup on their beans, they would survive because they're tolerant to it. So our non-GMO beans are not the same as organic beans. We spray them uh, with herbicide. This year I had to spray with insecticide to kill some aphids. We haven't used any fungicides yet. It's something that could help increase our yields in the future if we wanted to try it. I spray them with two passes of herbicide. The first pass is before they even emerge. So I spray a barrier on the soil where the soybeans can come up through it, but the weeds can't. And then if there's any weeds that pop through it, I spray them when they're like this tall with a second shot of herbicide to kill any, like there's some lamb's quarters and sometimes velvet leaf that pokes through. So an interesting concept people have of pesticides, they think that we're putting it right on their food, but I'm literally spraying these beans when they're like four inches tall, and then we're not harvesting till at least three months later. 
unless someone's being completely negligent, it's really not something you need to be worried about. This whole non-GMO and organic thing is kind of just a crapshoot. I hope I've explained this well enough. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments because I sometimes don't think of everything to say. That's what we do with our soybeans. That's what's going on around here. If you have questions, please comment below. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Also, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking our videos and continue to subscribe. We are selecting our gift card giveaway recipient on October 18th. So that's coming up next week. So make sure you stay tuned. We will see you next time.